Hello, this is Dr. Joe Schneider from the Hope Brain and Body Recovery Center, and I'm here today with Emily. Emily had a traumatic brain injury, and um, she was fortunate enough to come to our office, and we've done some really great work with her to get her back, get her life back. Absolutely. So, so Emily, you want to explain to us uh, sure. what happened? Um, so I was injured in a fight um, with some students in my school that I work in, and um, I was out of work for, must have been at least five months, and when I went back to work, I was okay, um, but then, you know, started to go downhill pretty fast once the demands increased. Um, so when I started school again in September and life became a little bit more complicated, I really was suffering terribly. Um, I couldn't make it through the day. I was nauseous to the point of nearly vomiting at any point. Um, had a hard time thinking, couldn't sleep. Um, so things were very desperate. Um, I reached out to um, someone and they recommended I come see Joe. They I highly, highly recommended him and um, it's been life altering. So I'm able to sit here today and speak um, to you because of his efforts and his um, genius, I think, really. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, I never knew I was genius, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> right now I, I can't even do my ABCs. No, I'm really kidding. Um, the, uh, the emotional part of, of traumatic brain injury is usually worse than the injury itself. How did you feel emotionally? I think that that term desperate is really um, something that uh, nervous and anxious all of the time. You wonder how much brain energy you, I mean, brain energy you have, and whether you're going to make it through the day. I'm a single parent who works full time, um, and I have to kind of weigh each thing that I do and, and whether or not I'm, I'm able to do that and kind of survive through the day. So, so that's a huge emotional burden. I think. Um, yeah. Am I able to perform my job duties? Am I able to raise a good child? Um, expending all of that energy and whether or not I'm going to, to backslide or be very sick again. Um, so that's all very taxing and especially taxing on your brain. Yes, it really is. Now, Emily um, works at a computer and um, your computer work towards the end of the day, you had light sensitivity, you had the uh, inability to get headaches and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. So there's a lot of things that like when you felt good or you didn't feel good, but you had to continue in your work, it really brought some severe consequences, pain and fatigue and so forth. So when you got home from work, what did you usually want to do? Lay in bed, lay, lay in, in the bed, bed in the dark. Just, and, and lay in bed in the dark, mm -hmm. right? And just get away from everything. But unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, that's not my life. I, like I said, I have a toddler by myself, so that wasn't an option. So I had to kind of persevere and find some sort of solution to what I was going through. Yeah. So when she came here, we uh, did our assessment or evaluation. We put you through a rehab program. Were you surprised about what the things that we were doing that you never got before? Yes. <laughs> um, so just every time it's kind of like an adventure. What are we going to do next? Or what type of thing? What I really like about you is you treat the whole body and the, it, very holistic. So every doctor that I saw treated me for something different. So I saw a physical therapist um, for the vestibular therapy, but then I saw a neurologist and a sports medicine doctor. So they would never communicate and work on you as a whole. You treat the diet, the, you know, the psycho, psychological aspects, the neurological aspects, the chiropractic aspects. So all of those pieces together, and that's where I really see results. Yes. Um, treating all of those pieces together because I mean, your brain plays such an important role in everything that you do. And I think that's what people don't understand about well, someone living with a concussion, but also treating it. Well, you're right. People don't understand living with a concussion. They, you look good. You know, maybe you come in, you know, you look, you're smart, you're working and so forth. It's like, what's the matter with you? Uh, same thing with stroke or uh, my own concussions. People look at you like, oh, you look great now. Well, or just, you know, you know, fuck up. You fuck can do up. it. Or yeah, get get yeah. a good night's sleep and you'll be fine. And you put can't you, overcome it. Put your it. cowboy boots mm -hmm. on and get out there and work really, really hard. I wish right? I could. I wish you could. Um, but there was also social consequences for you. Would you like to relate some of the things that that's sure. social? Sure. Um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't drink alcohol. Not that that's that big of a deal, but I can't go out in the evenings. Um, I can't watch television for a long time. Over a year, I couldn't listen to music. 
It was hard for me to talk with people. Um, so that's all very isolating. Again, you have to kind of save up the amount of energy that you have, and that was not a priority. I had to literally make it through every day. So, you know, the good people stick around and the rest of them, you know, kind of fade away. But, um, you know, slowly those things are coming back. I can drive and listen to the radio at the same time, which seems ridiculous, but it is a big accomplishment. Um, I can listen to music while I'm with my kid and sing in the car. So all of those little things um, that you enjoy in life, that quality of life is, is coming back. So that's yeah. all great. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Uh, so all these things start coming back, um, but you were in a state where you worked, you took care of your child, and then you crashed. Mm -hmm. Work, take care of your child, crash with all kinds of symptoms, light, sensitivity, you can't listen to music, you don't like crowded rooms, you don't like going out to restaurants, you don't like doing this and doing that. So you really become isolated, mm -hmm. just to live your life. Right, and it felt like I had ice pick in my head at all times. So I was either here or over here. Um, again, very nauseous just from all the stimulation, um, noise. I used to wear cotton in my ears all the time. I used to wear sunglasses, you know, these big blue blocker sunglasses on um, at night even. So, yeah, so it's not a, it's a great way to live. Not a great way to live. Um, she has helped her actually her therapy center. Every little thing that she sees, <laughs> it just isn't right. She'll give me like uh, cushions for the poles. <laughs> She's enhanced our therapy existence here. <laughs> she has a lot of ingenuity. She's a, a bright, uh, very intelligent woman that uh, works hard, cares about her family. And right now you're realizing yourself, you're finding yourself again. And a different self. I mean, you know, it's definitely, I'm not the person that I was you know, two concussions ago. Um, Maybe some things have slowed down probably for the better, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, things happen in life and then you have to adapt mm -hmm. and try to be the best person that you can now. So um, it's, it's a process. Yes, it is a process. But it, like I, I've said on previous videos, um, courage is the word that comes to me. Uh, it takes courage to do what you do. Yeah, and yes. It takes courage to get, get recover. Mm -hmm. it, it really does take a lot of courage because when you are feeling this way, and then you come into my center, I'm asking you to do a variety of things, mm -hmm. right? And you don't really know where it's gonna go. Uh, it takes a lot of courage coming back. And trust. To, and trust mm -hmm. to our appointments. So we wanna thank you very much for being our patient. I'm so glad no, we got you. great results. Yeah. Yes, and that um, we're getting lives back. Mm -hmm. We're making transformations. Thanks Absolutely. very much, have a great day.